Okay, so welcome. Tonight's class is going to be on my favorite strategy for trading today's markets. So I like to do this uh, class quite a bit, basically because as the markets change, what works the best under certain market circumstances are going to change as well. So what we'll be looking at today is current market action, basically the action that we've seen heading into this week, and the types of strategies to focus on when we're dealing with the current type of market action that we're seeing right now. So today's date is March 13th, 2008. So to kick this off, basically what we're seeing right now is we had a pretty extreme flush heading into early February, you know, really a massive downside move. This created that spike in volatility that we've seen over the last month where we've basically seen the intraday range for most of the trading action really expand. This can create a lot of problems for some traders because what happens is that as that range expands, people aren't adjusting properly to what is happening currently in the market. So they'll usually get into kind of a routine where they're used to this slow and steady movement, corrections, then the continuation, back and forth. And they're used to playing a lot of those moves that really do offer some pretty easy predictability for a lot of traders, especially when you're looking at trend trading. Now, when you end up in a market like this where we go into corrective mode, then a lot of traders get left behind. And sometimes if they continue to apply the same strategies that they've been focusing upon, they end up taking some pretty big hits on their account. Now, the biggest thing to avoid this type of situation in the first place, obviously, is to understand the type of price action that leads up to these extreme volatility moves in the first place. So let's look at that just to begin with. And basically, that focus has to do with two things. Basically, we're looking at ways that the market corrects. And when we look back at past action in the market, one of the first things that I try to watch for is if we're in a trending move, how much has that trend moved compared to previous impulse moves in the past? So an impulse move is your primary direction of your trend where you're seeing like the strongest action with the least amount of overlap from one bar to the next. Every different time frame is going to have different impulse moves that happen. On the daily time frame, you can see a number of those that have happened over the last year. So I first began doing this, you know, current market action presentation back last year when we were looking at a lot of these corrections that were very similar to what we ended up having in February, where we had this volatility spike happening. And what we were looking at at those times were we had these impulse moves that were basically very similar to previous upside moves. Now, because the momentum was stronger than average on these upside moves, it's really common to see corrections start to happen with a shift in that momentum at the highs. We saw that same thing happening in the current market heading into February's correction. It was even more obvious if you go and look at the NQ. So the NASDAQ had an even stronger spike and then a, uh, even more of a shift in momentum here. So you can see that if you go and look at the daily time frame on that. So what we're going to be looking at are different ways that the market can correct. And basically you can get a correction that can happen through price as well as through time. A lot of times these corrective moves actually begin before you will see a pullback, before you see an extreme pullback or a large price correction. Many times corrections were first begin through time, meaning that you will have the start of a correction after you have that extreme impulse move. And at that point, the momentum will start to shift meaning you can still see higher highs happening, but overall, the pace of that trend slows. So at this point is where we're really starting to see this correction begin. 
But a lot of people aren't thinking of that as a correction. They're thinking of it as a continuation of the trend. Now, there's actually times that this sort of action can lead to another break higher in the market. We saw this today in oil when we were looking at oil in pre-market today, where we had this happening on a 200 tick chart. It had moved off the lows. It was still pushing to higher highs, but instead of offering a reversal, it actually continued by breaking out of that. So it's very similar to what you would see with something like a bull flag, where you have your trend in place and you get this pullback or correction, and then you get the continuation of the trend, except that it's slanted. So your, your correction is basically still happening, it's just happening more over time than it is through price. So as we go into the current price action, this is something that is really important to understand. We are not just looking at price corrections where we're looking at pure change in direction of a trend. We're also looking at the role that momentum plays in that correction. So when we're looking at how momentum can shift and how it can lead to stronger reversals, like the one that we saw in February, and even like what we saw today, we are looking at what is happening in the trend itself. So as the market is moving, you'll often see these strong impulse moves, like I was just talking about. But over time, that channel can shift and it doesn't necessarily mean that you see these upside moves stop being as strong. They can still be as strong, but the overall channel that they're trading in starts to shift. So you might have an uptrend like this, and then it basically begins to have these stronger um, pullbacks, these stronger corrections. So even though it's still hitting higher highs and the momentum on each of these smaller moves is still average to stronger than average, the overall channel itself can start to change momentum. And that can be one of the very first clues that you have a larger correction on the horizon in terms of price and not just over time. So we can drop down and look at even smaller time frames to give us a better indication of when is that correction actually going to hit. So if you look at, for example, the S&P 500, when we saw that reversal happening in February, we were able to time that reversal very, 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 very um, closely because of shifts in momentum that were happening on smaller time frames. Most notably, the Russell 2000 was what led that shift in momentum in um, the February move, heading into early February. So in that case, we had this strategy develop here on the S&P 500, which I refer to as an avalanche. So the name comes from the fact that it often leads to really extreme uh, follow through where the momentum tends to increase and you can get a stronger trend reversal when this happens. That happens most often when that momentum is shifting before this avalanche pattern happens. So later in today's session, we're going to look at another strategy that we saw happening today in the market in the S&P 500 as well. And we'll look at this avalanche as it relates to a number of these securities also. For those of you that are new to following my methodology, I'm someone that focuses uh, a great deal on reading pure price action. I don't rely as heavily upon indicators. You will see me use them every once in a while, most notably Fibonacci. Um, sometimes moving averages over the years. I don't even use moving averages as much as um, I used to. They're not even on my charts right now. But what we're looking at is a lot of how this momentum plays an underlying role in how the strategies and the market is unfolding. So if you can learn to read momentum, you're going to be able to clue yourself in to what the most likely next pattern is to develop in whatever security it is you're trading, whatever time frame it is you're trading. So I trade a number of different things. Uh, those of you that are following me live, you know, we are looking at the S&P 500. We're looking at 
oil, we're looking at individual stocks as well as Forex. These are kind of the mainstays of my trading, but I'm not limited to one particular time frame. So I'll trade on multiple time frames, um, multiple levels. So when we're looking at momentum, the two strategies we're going to talk about today are going to be this avalanche strategy, and then I'm going to talk about one that I call a 2T, which stands for two tops. And flipped over, you can call it a 2B, so that would be two bottoms. Now, the avalanche strategy, if you flip this over and you're coming off of lows, then that is called a phoenix. So uh, this avalanche strategy that we're looking at, we're basically looking for continuation of the shift in momentum. So we're looking for momentum to pick up on the downside, congestion to follow, and then a continuation of the downtrend. So I'm going to show you guys some examples here where you can see these strategies in play. So I'm pulling this from a class that I gave last fall, same type of um, session that we're having today. But what I want you guys to understand is that the things that I'm talking about happening right now in the market are the same things that have been happening since I started trading two decades ago. So you're really looking at something that is going to continue to work over time. It's not going to go out of fashion as the market changes, as volatility changes. These strategies are still going to be just as good in another 20 years as they are today. And in whatever market, it becomes the most popular at that time. So obviously now the cryptos are attracting a lot of attention. You can use these strategies to trade the cryptos. So what we're looking at here, is basically that template that I used at the beginning of last year, you can see playing out here on this 60 minute time frame of the ES, where we had that upside move, and then you can see that momentum shift. So if I draw that channel, you'll notice that that last section of the momentum shift was actually very close to what we saw happening on that template as well, where it again changed momentum within that channel. And that is what helps lead to some of these stronger moves where you'll see the stronger breakdowns with less hesitation as the trade begins. So a big topic that I talk about, for example, um, we had an entire session yesterday in my mentoring class, is looking at strategies that can give you an early trigger versus ones that will give you a trigger a little bit later on that it might not be like as close to the highs or as close to the lows, but it has less of a chance of kind of whipping around before it gets going. And so we're going to see that when we look at uh, today's trading action here a little bit later on. And basically what you'll notice is that when you see an additional shift in momentum where momentum starts to slow a little bit more compared to average and compared to the prior moves, then those are the ones that when that channel breaks, it's going to have the most secure follow through. If you don't have that shift in momentum, but you have a trigger anyways, then you might get a little bit more playing around before it ends up going. So for example, if you're going to a high, you're going to a slightly higher high and you get a channel break, it might need to play around a little bit more back and forth, kind of shifting that channel before you see momentum increase again on the downside. So with something like this, this is an ideal scenario because you have that momentum already shifting. Now let's go look at this as it relates to some more recent action. So I'm going to show you some trade action here uh, as we were heading into over the last couple of weeks. So this is a larger 120 minute chart on the ES and this shows you that avalanche that led to some of the smaller corrections since the larger correction took place. So over here, you can't see it on this chart, but over here we had that strong downside move to kick off of February. And then this was the bounce that we saw coming off of the lows. So even though the same type of pattern is what actually kicked off this move on the larger time frame back, uh, you know, a few months or, or a few weeks earlier, the same type of action also happened here on the smaller time frame. So again, it looks really close to what that template was. Here we have a correction through time, mostly through time, a little bit through price, but overall, primarily through time, two wave move coming out of it, 
shift in momentum again, just like we saw in the template that I drew for you guys, and then a smaller shift in momentum. So if you were just taking a channel break, what you can see very quickly, and let me clear this so maybe you can see this a little bit easier, is that this goes to a slightly higher high there. Now, the problem that you run into is that you might have the best entry when that channel breaks, right? But if you don't give your stop enough room to have that momentum shift a little bit better on the smaller time frames, you might get flushed out of the setup before it ends up going more securely in the direction that you're looking for. So if you wait a little bit longer for the momentum to shift, you can have a stronger setup where you're less likely to get flushed out, but you might not have the most ideal price. So in yesterday's uh, Monday mentoring session for our League of Traders, what we talked about was what are different ways that we can look to get into some of these securities and how do we adjust how we approach them when we take such trades? So with the avalanche, you're looking at these first continuation moves. So what we're looking at right here on the 120 minute chart, I'm gonna come back to here later in today's class because it is exactly the same type of action that we saw happening on the market today. So the next time it came into the highs over here basically. So what we have here is that overall, there's a more gradual shift. The, there's still kind of an uptrend continuing. You can see the slightly higher high with this little bit of a tail up here. So it's basically kind of like a mesh between what I would call a 2T and an avalanche. It has that primary avalanche characteristic where it has that pull down off of the highs, shift in momentum, and then the breakdown. The difference is, is that we get this little flush up at the highs. And this little flush is really common and it traps a lot of people and it confuses a lot of traders, especially if you're a newer trader. Because you break these prior highs, a lot of times momentum increases on a smaller time frame, but it never really breaks out of that channel. A lot of times it pulls up, it'll hit something like a tail like this, and then it will pull back down into the range. So we're gonna see this again as we go forward. But what we're looking at in the current market right now is we're looking at some of these initial strategies and in the trend moves. Because when you have this increase in volatility like we're seeing on the daily time frame, and you have that wider range that is now forming on the larger daily time frame, it means that we're in a market where we get a lot more pivot type of trades, a lot more back and forth action within this channel. And it leads to a lot of these strategies like these avalanches. So basically, when you're looking at an avalanche, the first two waves of downside are going to be the most predictable. So when we traded the ES today as day trade action, this was what we were looking at as the primary target for intraday action on today's action. But the larger time frames might give you more. There might be more potential that's building on the larger time frame. So for example, when we go and look at what was happening on the smaller time frames on the ES today, we had this level as support intraday, but the larger time frames had a 60 minute strategy that was also developing that followed through much more strongly and kept the trend going throughout the session. So a lot of these, when you're looking at the avalanche setup and the 2B and the 2T, you're looking predominantly at those first two waves, but you also want to pay attention to what's happening on the larger trend. So if you're just a trader looking to build confidence in your system and really trying to build your account, I usually urge traders to focus upon those first two waves of continuation because if they're trying to trade continuation moves after that, after that point, a lot of times that can go into more of a range and they'll end up with false setups, they'll end up getting flushed out and the security will turn around on them. So you can definitely have trends that will continue even if the larger one is within a range, but your best moves are going to be to focus upon those first initial two waves. Now, with that template that you saw earlier, and let me actually, I'm gonna go and grab that and put that on this slide as well so that you guys can see this a little bit more clearly. So, I'm gonna copy this here and I'm gonna 
paste it onto the current slide that we're looking at. So when we look at this template, whoops, I somehow flipped it over. There we go. So when we look at this template, you'll notice that even though I drew this template a year ago, the type of price action that we are seeing right now is continuing to mimic this same template over and over again. So basically, you end up with the first reversal type of strategy up at the highs. Oftentimes, that can be like a 2T or it can be an avalanche. Then you'll get this better avalanche in here. And then you can get another two-way continuation where the pause might be a lot shorter than what you ended up seeing here. It might actually go a lot more quickly like this. And then at that point, the momentum tends to start to shift. So you might get a uh, 2B, which is your two bottoms with a slightly lower low, and then go into a Phoenix at that point. That's exactly what we saw happening here on the 120. And it's the same type of price action. You will see this entire system of strategies flow from one strategy into the next, into the next, into the next, over and over and over again. And that's what I really want to drill into you guys today because a lot of traders get locked into trading, say, just one particular strategy. And they're losing track of, okay, when you trade one strategy, what's the next strategy that is most likely to follow in this series of, you know, price action that you see? And this is very typical of what we will see when we are trading in a larger trading channel, a larger trading range. So really pay attention to this template here, memorize this template, draw a copy of this template, um, take a screenshot when I send you the video to keep looking at it and go back to it because you will see it over and over and over again. So when we go here now, next, and we look at momentum, obviously can see a number of ways that you know, momentum impacted the corrections over time. So two Bs and two Ts, this is where we start to see momentum initially beginning to shift at the highs and the lows within the market. Let's go on to our next slide. And we're going to look at what typical price action looks like where you have like a typical momentum move so that you're able to understand, okay, when is it that momentum is really starting to shift? How do I know that this is a slower than average move or a faster than average move? And that we're really starting to see momentum begin to turn over. So basically what you want to do is you want to look back in time on whatever time frame it is that you're trading, whatever security it is that you're trading. Look for periods where you had back and forth action in the market. And look at the momentum of each of those V type of moves. That's going to give you an idea of where typical momentum is in that security. So that when you see another channel form, even if it has some stronger moves within it on the downside, you are able to pay attention to what that overall channel is doing and understand that that is triggering a momentum shift that can then lead to a stronger reversal. So this pattern that you're seeing here, this is called a phoenix. And you'll notice that in this case, this phoenix is coming out of a trading range, a trading channel. So in many cases, it can be coming out of a downtrend, but it can also be coming out of a trading channel. So you can see the same thing happening with an avalanche. You can see it forming within this trading channel where that momentum shifts and then it leads to a breakdown coming out of that channel. So as the trading channel continues on the daily time frames, when you see something falling into a wider range, volatility will tend to start to dry up. You'll start to see things kind of revert a bit more to a norm. And you'll want to watch for those shifts in momentum because that's going to indicate usually which direction that channel is going to end up breaking. And it gives you a heads up for the break. Now the channel can break without it giving you a heads up. It might just pull down here, pause for a second, and then keep going. We'll see that on the 60 minute chart of the ES today.
But if you have that shift in momentum, it's going to give you a stronger setup because you can keep your stops a lot tighter. You can keep a stop over that momentum shift as opposed to keeping it over the entire larger time frame high uh, with the larger pivot. So what that means is that your return compared to what you're risking is going to be better if you have that momentum shift in play than if you don't have that momentum shift in play. So I'm going to show you guys um, a trade that we were looking at developing on Thursday in our live trading room, and it was taking place in the euro pound. So we were looking at, okay, going into the session, what is happening in the markets? You know, where are we going to have like the most likely odds of a successful strategy starting to develop? So one of the things that we were looking at was the euro pound, and it was on this day going into that session. So this was the day of the follow through. So what I want to show you guys is that you're looking at something that is in a trading range. It's in a trading channel. So within that trading channel, the best place for a new strategy is going to be as something is coming up to a midway point within the channel, then you can look for some corrections. And then as it corrects, you can look for continuation. And then you can look for things at the upper end of the channel and, of course, things that are coming into the lower end of the channel. So at those four points in time, that's where you're going to have the best trades develop and trigger. Now, at this point right here in the midway channel zone, you want to be a little bit more cautious because while you can get reactions off of a midway in a channel, so if we're going back and forth in a channel like this, you can get reactions at that midway point, but it might only be a strategy that triggers on a smaller time frame. So you might get like an avalanche on a smaller time frame, but on the larger time frame, it can lead to a range that actually ends up breaking with a much stronger trend a little bit later on. So this point here, that what I would say would be like the second level, that's going to be the point where, again, you know, when you're determining um, kind of, you know, how risky is this trade or what kind of potential I have on this trade, that would be one that you would want to look for closer target levels, ideally, and you would have greater expectations that it might not give you an incredibly strong trend to move. It can just be part of a correction that can then go and turn around and head back in the direction of the trend that it was forming going into that correction. So in the current range in the market, this is what we have to keep in mind. And this is the thing that what we were paying very close attention to as we had it into today's trading. Because on the larger time frames, on the daily time frame, on uh, like the Russell 2000, for example, we were retesting those prior highs. So we were then at the upper end of that trading channel. I'll show you guys the chart here in just a second. First, let's look at this trade though, because as you guys all know, when we are looking at the market and we are looking at when um, these trades develop and when they end up triggering. You don't always have what might be a picture perfect scenario. So picture perfect avalanche is obviously kind of like that template that we saw where you'll have the pullback. You'll have really nice back and forth moves. You preferably see momentum shifting and then you'll get a breakdown, right? It might actually be something that goes like this, one wave down, one wave up, and then your momentum shifts, and then you get a breakdown. Those are going to be the picture-perfect avalanches. A lot of times that doesn't happen. And you can get like these mesh traits, so between the two T and an avalanche. And what you can see happening is that in many of these avalanches, you might get these, these late spikes before it ends up turning around and um, offering up a trigger. So what we were talking about Thursday morning when we were looking at this was we wanted to see it come into this previous low. And I told my traders what we needed to see at that point ideally would be a bounce that could offer a setup a little bit later in the day. Because if you took the trading channel, when we first started watching it, it was up in here, so the upper end of this blue range. So it was offering a little continuation 
on a smaller time frame. You can't see this on the 15 minute, but it was on a smaller time frame. And it was offering a little continuation. But we knew that if it went right through that previous low, that at that point, it had already put in a move very similar to the previous downside move. And what that would mean is that it had greater possibility that it could stall, lead to a little bit of a longer correction, basically have that time correction before it would end up offering another solid trade. Now, this is where we get into, do I jump on the trade using the earlier trigger, knowing I might have to wait through a correction, or do I wait for that correction and then take the trade? This is something you're going to have to ask yourself and become you know, comfortable with yourself. Because if you take the early trigger, there's not really a level that you can place a good stop other than above that high. Because there's no smaller bounce in here that would offer a good place for a stop. Even if it bounced in here, if this offered a correction, it could still come up, take out a stop, and then go if you're looking at it on a smaller time frame. So you're basically stuck with keeping a stop above this high if you want to have the best chance that you're not going to get stopped out of it. So if you went and took that trade at the first initial trigger that we were looking at, you'd have to go into it knowing that you might have to wait. And you'll see that in today's action, when we are looking at the 2T that triggered on the ES, there wasn't much weight. It just went through there. But that, in that case, we also had a setup that triggered on a smaller time frame as it went into the higher high. So the difference between the ES today and what we saw on the Euro Pound last week is that this one you would technically call an avalanche because it holds that second high. The one today actually went to a slightly higher high. So that's that 2T that we were looking at earlier. So you can see there's a bit of an overlap between the two setups. In both cases, you want that shift in momentum in here. So it might be a shift in momentum sideways like this, or it could be a shift in momentum like this, which can flush to a slightly higher high before it ends up going. You also can get strategies like we saw today on oil that we were looking at, where oil pulled up, it had that shift in momentum, and then it broke the channel like that. It actually had one more little move in there, and then moved. So that's the same thing that could happen in here where you would see a little bit of a shift like this, and then it can break. So these are the different ways that these reversals will develop at these highs and at the lows. So I'm showing them all to you because they all have so many similarities, even though they might look completely different to you if you're a novice trader. The main thing is that momentum shift that is so important. So if we go and look at this now and look at the difference between, you know, if you're placing your entry at the channel break on the larger time frame versus looking for a momentum shift, you can see that even though you have a lower entry trigger a lot of times on some of these continuation moves where you wait for a momentum shift, you can also many times keep a much tighter stop. So what that means is that you might take four contracts on a share where you have a much wider stop because you want to keep your risk pretty comparable. Maybe you're risking like maybe, let's say you're going to risk $100 on a trade. And for that $100, you might only be able to take four contracts. Now, if on the other hand, you have a much tighter stop, you might be able to take 12 contracts and still only be risking $100, but you have a much tighter stop. So what that means is that by the time you hit target levels, you have a much bigger gain than you would otherwise. The difference being, of course, in some cases, if you don't take that early trigger and you do wait for a continuation strategy later on, you might not get the trade at all because it might only pause for a brief second and then keep going.
So when we're looking at target levels on these strategies, when you're looking at an avalanche, the typical main target level that you will look for will be 100% extension. So here's a screenshot of uh, the euro pound as it was coming into that 100% target zone. Was hadn't quite hit yet, but it was getting right into that zone. And if you go back and look at your charts afterwards, you can see this is where we saw, you know, this hold for an initial move. So when we're looking at, you know, building your confidence in your trading and building your accounts, looking for things where you see these first initial two wave moves or these first initial two wave moves and then a two wave continuation right there, like we saw on the template, that's basically all you look for on the trade because after that point, that's where momentum can start to shift and you can get a lot larger back and forth action and it becomes harder to time things for a lot of the newer traders because it becomes a lot easier to get whipped out of a trade. And this is where you also see traders start to time lows. They'll try to bottom trade. They'll try to look for you know, buying opportunities at these levels. But it might not necessarily lead to a really good bounce at all because the momentum won't have changed yet. You want to watch for that momentum to change before you get too excited about trading a reversal again. So if you see an avalanche like this happen, you want to stay with the direction of that trend until you really do see momentum shifting, um, usually happening at a much larger level of price support. Um, otherwise, you're you're basically going to be trying to fight that trend because the thing with these avalanches is that you're looking for something that is a reversal in a main trend. Yes, sometimes it can be a two-way correction that ends up being part of a larger period of congestion that then turns around. But if you're looking at it as it's coming off of the upper end of a trading range or the lower end of a trading range for a Phoenix, there's a better chance that it's going to try to keep pulling in even farther until it retests either the midway zone of that trading channel or the lower end of that trading channel, unless the momentum shifts. If the momentum shifts, then you can go into that sideways trading range. So stay with the direction of that trend until you see a really solid shift in momentum. So another example of this avalanche, again, looking really close to what we saw in that template, was on Kroger. So we were looking at Kroger as an earnings play, and it actually triggered the day before earnings. So what we were looking at was the shift in momentum here with the channel, closing that gap there, so coming into pretty good resistance over here, and then it pulled back, and it formed that avalanche on the daily time frame. So there was actually a gap that day, um, this first initial downside day. So it offered up some early morning gap, gap activity, some gap trades in the direction of that gap that ended up breaking that through the lower end of the channel. What you'll note here is that the intraday gap trades on this day, they would have triggered before the lower end of that channel broke. So a lot of times the lower end of the channel can serve as the support levels just like we saw happening on the euro pound and that can sh lead to a shift sometimes in momentum before it's able to break so again you have to be prepared that as something is coming into some of those previous lows you might get that pause happening it might base it might not go immediately through the lower end of that channel unless you have a shift in momentum. Now with Kroger, that shift in momentum was helped out by the fact that it gapped down that morning, so it was able to continue more strongly and break that lower end of the channel pretty quickly. It also had gap trades triggering again the next day. Um, so for those of you that trade gap trading strategies, this is also something that I will look for in the current market right now. So we're coming to, we're seeing slowdown now in earnings. Earnings season is kind of wrapping up here. So we're not seeing as many of these types of trades. We had like Dick Sporting Goods was an example a couple of days ago, but not really too many right now. Um, this type of action is most common when you're looking at earnings season. You will see this type of strategy happening a lot more, a lot more often. But as it relates to the avalanche strategy, you can see that this is something that you really want to watch for, especially if you have news coming out in a security and you have something like an avalanche forming because the gap can create a breakaway gap 
that will really propel the momentum even further than just a gap midway would do. So you see that same thing happening back here earlier in last year, kind of like going into the summer actually, where it had, again, shifting momentum at the highs, a little bit of a smaller avalanche, and then it had a, a larger avalanche once that channel broke. And so again, that gap was a breakaway gap, broke it out of the channel, and it allowed the move to propel even farther. Here's the intraday action that can show you guys that a little bit more detail. Notice that back and forth movement, pretty steady here on Kroger, but then it shifted momentum ahead of that gap. So that shift in momentum helped keep this going. It helped it push through these previous lows. So the previous lows still served as a support level. And you can see that that's a point where the momentum began to shift a little bit intraday. But it wasn't enough of a support move that it turned things around because the momentum was still too strong to really get another reversal happening off of those lows. So in situations like this, when you're coming off of the upper end of a trading channel and you're getting triggers happening off of the upper end of the trading channel, if it has that strong momentum into the lower end of the trading channel, it has a better chance of just pausing slightly and then breaking through the lower end of that channel even easier. So here's where we were looking at support uh, intraday in the room. And you can see that's where the momentum again started to shift. Basically, it's a closure of a previous gap. It was a congestion level on a previous gap. It was also the 123.6% extension, which is a really common level that you will see support hitting on when you get uh, these avalanche strategies. So that 100% level is the one that holds most often when you get the momentum that is similar going into congestion and coming out of the congestion. But if it increases, then it's easier to push to, to the 123.6, sometimes the 138.2. Usually that 100% level can serve as a, as a point where you can see momentum starting to shift. But after that point, it can still continue in the direction of uh, that avalanche. So last week, what we were looking at was the Russell 2000 again, because it was the one that was trading really consistently heading into this correction in February. And it was also the one where we were seeing the most solid two wave move starting as it was pushing back up into previous highs. So what we were looking at last week was a two wave move that would bring it back up into the upper end of the zone, that zone. And then what I said was, okay, at these at this level, this is where we would start to look for these momentum reversal shift pa patterns happening again. And that's exactly what we ended up seeing happen today. Before we switch over to today's charts though, I want to show you guys uh, Facebook because this is one where we are actually seeing that same price development trying to play out. So this makes me a lot more leery on the upside on Facebook because we have that same momentum shift on the weekly time frame and then that avalanche formation is attempting to form on the daily time frame as well. So for those of you that are looking for examples of this type of action, you can look for things like Facebook, uh, Home Depot. These are a couple of them that might be setting up as swing trades here in the near future because we are seeing that shift in momentum happening on the daily and the weekly time frame. Not necessarily so much on the intraday time frame on some of these quite yet, but uh, we are seeing it on the larger day daily time frame. So those are something to keep uh, an eye on as we head forward. Now I'm going to switch over and look at action today. So very quickly here is the Russell 2000. So you can see that move into those prior highs right here as the price resistance level. So we had the initial impulse move on the upside, 
second continuation move. And this goes back to what I was talking about earlier when you're trading in a channel. When it first hits resistance at the midway zone, you can get corrections that are happening at that level. We can see it again as it tried to retest, did basically a little 2T in here and pulled back again. But usually after that point, you want to use more caution. So it doesn't usually give you as strong of a move as you had on that upside move. So this is where you really have to focus more upon smaller time frame setups and really look for closer target levels than you would something coming off of the lower or upper end of the range or something that is triggering a continuation move midway in that range. So this becomes the 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 initials place that you can find um, strategies happening. Here becomes the secondary place. But again, that's going to be the higher risk zone where you're not usually going to get as much return compared to what you're risking. Here's our third place, and then here's our fourth place as we're coming back into the upper period of resistance. So heading into today, we had a couple of things happening. So what we were talking about in pre-market was this overall channel and comparing that to what was happening over here. Because over here we had a strong continuation of the impulse move, right? Really good, solid upside, okay? But as we went into the next trading day, that momentum began to shift. So in the early morning hours, you can see that it started to begin to develop a time correction. And that correction actually started in here initially, where you then start to see more overlap from one bar to the next, and then it just increased further into that early pre-market trade. Now, because this overall moment, momentum was still very strong, even though we had downward movement yesterday where we saw pullbacks, we saw corrections intraday, you'll notice that overall the channel was still a bit on the slower side. Yes, it had some great short opportunities in today, but it wasn't enough to really get things kicked off on the downside. It needed more of a momentum shift on the larger time frame to allow it to do that. So what we were seeing in pre-market action was this channel began to form. And this is what I usually call a shallow avalanche as it was as it was initially kicking off because this pullback here is a little bit more gradual than an average move. So it's not that V that we're the, usually looking at, it's a little bit slower than you what you would typically see with like the V back and forth action within the trend. And there's a little bit more overlap. So that shallow avalanche can have a much stronger follow through than you would have like a typical avalanche. Typical avalanche, again, you're looking for 100% extension. When you get a shallow avalanche, it can go a lot further. But in this case, we had that flush pre-market. Thank you, Trump. So had a little bit of a flush pre-market that broke this and made it into a 2T as opposed to the shallow avalanche. The only difference here being it had that flush on the end that took it to a higher high. That's the only difference here because the overall channel is still really gradual and that's exactly what you want to look for. So when you look at this on the daily on the 60 minute time frame, you don't have a smaller time frame entry on this. <coughs> Excuse me. So basically, the only way you could take this on the 60 minute time frame is to take that channel break which would mean that the only logical place you could place a stop and not have to worry about, okay, does this go into a little bit longer period of congestion before it tries to break lower, like we saw happening on the Euro pound, is to keep your stop above that high. There's no other place to keep it that you wouldn't risk being flushed out in a case like this. That's exactly what we saw happening on that Euro pound. So it's really important to show you guys, you know, that was a, a trade from Thursday. This is what we saw happening today. Same type of thing. So these strategies, these patterns, even though we're looking at totally different markets, we're looking at totally different time frames many times, there is a lot of overlap 
in how they end up following through. Now, intraday, we were actually looking at this on another time frame as well. We were looking at this as a 2T on a smaller intraday chart. So it also had the potential to trade it as just pure day trade action where you're just looking at those first initial waves of action. I'll widen this up here a little bit. So basically, our trade today was looking at the initial move on news here this morning with our lovely Secretary of State shift. And then the momentum was like once again starting to shift. So basically we had a similar pattern that we saw happening on the 60 minute time frame, but now we had it happening on a much smaller time frame intraday on like the 500 tick, the 200 tick, the two minute time frame, five minute time frame. So what we were looking at initially was we had a little bit of an early trigger. We were looking at a channel break on the smaller time frame. And this is where you can get these early triggers, but if the momentum doesn't shift, and I'll actually switch that to one minute chart so you guys can see that in a little bit more detail. Okay, so here was the trigger that we were looking at was basically this channel break right here. And so what we were seeing at that time was not much of a shift in momentum quite yet. So that meant we were dealing with an earlier, uh, a potential for an earlier entry on this that we might have to sit, hold through a little bit of a correction. It only ended up being one little push here. Held the zone of this previous high. Um, as I was talking today, I'm like, this is okay. This is where this has to hold, guys. And then we saw this pull back. You can see an initial pause here where it's trying to decide, you know, am I going to actually manage to, to gain momentum or am I going to try to shift momentum even further before we try to break down and basically see even more of that template that we saw on um, some of the other securities we were looking at, at that, that pure template, basically. So it managed to hold that, managed to gain that momentum, basically correction through time in here where you have that shift in momentum, but instead of bouncing at that level, it basically did more of a correction through time where you had that slowdown in the trend as opposed to a pure bounce at that level. It's both a correction, it's just two ways that you can see that correction form. And a lot of traders miss the fact that this is a correction because you're looking for a bounce in the opposite direction as opposed to just shifting the momentum at that level. So this continued hit first support level. That's where we were looking at, okay, at that point, then you're probably going to see an avalanche form for the continuation move. And I'm going to show you guys the main intraday target on that, which you'll see is different than on the 60 minute time frame. Because with a typical avalanche, your target level is going to be that measured move. So this is the strongest level that when you take an avalanche and you take a 2T, these two waves, at that point, that is where you are you have a higher chance that something is going to happen to the trend, that the trend can shift momentum at that point, it can turn things back around, um, it can go into a longer trading range at that point. So when you're looking at where is the best zone to take a trade where I'm guaranteed to have a major level of support that if the trend doesn't continue, it's gonna hold that level and you're looking to take your gains as that support is hitting, then this is the zone to take it. So obviously you can see here on this one, this ended up continuing the trend because it had the setup on the larger 60 minute time frame as well. It paused as that channel hit, but it didn't really give you another trade to set up. So even if you were looking at this on the smaller time frame here, I'm going to go to a five minute chart here and kind of try to draw that trend line in for you guys so you can see that. Oops, if I can draw straight. So you can see that that smaller time frame target, 
basically the typical target for an avalanche hit right at the lower end of that channel. So a lot of times you might find something happening like this where it can do something where it actually shifts momentum and allows you to take a channel break where you can put a tighter stop in. If it doesn't do that and it goes right away like this did where it had just a little bit of a bounce and then continued, it doesn't really offer that opportunity as easily because of things like we saw happening on the euro pound because it can bounce back up into the range before it continues. So you have to decide, are you comfortable with taking that trigger with the channel break and keeping a wider stop? Or do you need to develop another strategy to um, allow for the fact that you might have to play around with your stop, switch your stop up in order to manage your risk a little bit better? So you get into more advanced trade management if you go past using these two methodologies. So the two methodologies are either take the channel break, keep a wide stop, or watch for a momentum shift that you can keep a tighter stop. There are other ways you can manage it, but then again, like I said, that gets into some of the more advanced types of trade management. So that's something that you know we do work on, we talk about in our live training sessions, but for a beginner, these are the two that you want to focus on. They're going to give you the best possibility of hitting your larger target levels and doing it with a solid move and not getting flushed out of the trade before it gets to a target level. So throughout today's session, you know, I've talked a lot about um, our League of Traders and what we're doing live and the types of classes that we're having. So basically, it's a new service that uh, we've started this month. We're in the very beginning stages of this. So right now we are offering it free to anybody that wants to sign up, give us some feedback on the current uh, you know, way that we are doing things and follow along, learn the lessons that we're teaching you. Basically every Monday we have uh, Monday mentoring sessions. So each Monday basically I focus on one particular topic. So like I mentioned earlier, the topic this week was when you have situations like the ES, for example, where you have an early trigger, you have a strong bias in mind, but your trigger might be a little bit early and you have a better chance that you know, there's a possibility a flush could happen. How do you handle those types of situations? How do you trade those types of situations? And how do you recognize when you can wait for a little bit of a better entry and not have that risk? So Monday session was completely about that type of management. We got into some of those more advanced um, formulations for managing those type of situations. So anyone that signs up for the free trial right now, you have access to those previous Monday mentoring sessions. So you can access the one from this week, you can access the one from last week, and you also have access to the live trading room, which is on Tuesdays and Thursdays, where we follow this uh, type of action as it unfolds during the day. Now, right now, the 30-day trial, we're offering it to you guys that are signing up early for $79 as opposed to the typical $97 that it's going to be here uh, in a couple of weeks. So right now, if you want to join us, come check it out. Uh, get a feel for you know what we're doing live. I ran a live trading room for 12 years full-time, 15 years part-time, where it was more of a, a text-based format. So we were basically chatting in a text box, issuing alerts throughout the entire trading day. Um, but, you know, as technology evolved, a lot of people are going to more of the, the presentation like this, where you're actually talking, walking through trades, getting to understand how things are happening. So completely different format here than I'm used to, but I've really, you know, loved getting started with this again, talking to you guys live, redeveloping the community. So uh, if you guys have any questions on how to get started, so our link here is tonyhanson.com backslash join. If you have any questions, you can definitely shoot me over an email, info at tradingfrommainstreet.com. I see a couple of you guys have questions here in the room. So I will stick around uh, after today's class and actually answer those as well. So 
if I don't get to your, your question immediately right here, stick around because after I end the recording, I will still stay to answer your guys' questions. So let's see here. Oh, thank you guys. Karen says, thank you, Tony. Always good to do continuous review. I'm getting a lot of trade knowledge from the trade room. Thank you so much, Karen. Uh, great stuff, Tony. I'd love to get the recording of this. So yes, I will be sending out the recording for tonight's class as well. And again, this type of education that you guys are getting tonight, this is what you guys are getting live every Tuesday, every Thursday, every Monday. And then on Friday, we have forward focus, which is basically an outlook of the overall market for the weeks and months ahead. So you can join that as well. Um, let's see, can I discuss the scenario of going up against resistance and expect a pullback? So basically, as you're coming up into resistance levels, you are expecting some sort of reaction off of that level, meaning you're expecting some kind of correction. But that correction might be one where it is more through time than it is through price. So let's say our little line here is resistance. Actually, I better change to a different color. So it can be coming up against that pretty fast. And what can happen is that level of resistance, you might still get upside but it can serve to shift the momentum. And then you want to have to watch for is, okay, is this a larger major level of resistance or is it more a minor level of resistance? If this is like midway in a larger channel, for example, then that can actually lead to a continuation of move. I'll show you guys, actually I can show you guys what we were looking at on um, oil here this morning heading into the day so you can see exactly what that looks like. So oil this morning, pre-market, what I was looking at on oil was that overall oil was beginning to weaken on the larger time frames. It's actually starting to develop uh, strategies that would suggest more downside. But on the short shorter time frame, we were seeing um, patterns that were offering, that would offer another continuation move on the upside before it would be able to pull back and correct. So what we were looking at here is the upside move in here and then the momentum was shifting. But within this channel, you'll notice that these corrections overall not really offering deep Vs back and forth. So overall the momentum was still suggestive that this could pop again. So what I was looking for and told our guys to look for is that when that channel breaks, look for a measured move on the breakout. I actually thought it might go even here and give a little bit of an early trigger. So we were looking at initially, uh, this was our target level. It ended up breaking the channel a little bit later, but you can see it still offered that measured move. Now, when that target level hit, what happened is that the momentum shifted. So even though it was able to go to some slightly higher highs, at that point, right when it hit that measured move target, that was it. Then it started to lead to the continuation. And finally, we saw um, the downside that was forming on the larger time frames. So um, on Tuesdays and Thursdays, we do a little bit of a preview of some of these markets and look at what is happening on um, a lot of different time frames to give us an idea of where we can focus. So another thing we were looking at today, for example, was Qualcomm as um, a, a news play. So Qualcomm was another one that we saw a really large gap down on taking place on the daily time frame. So QCOM, it got dark on me here. I'm sitting in the dark. <laughs> so what we had here was the gap down on the daily time frame. And again, it was that breakaway gap, just like we saw in Kroger. So early in the morning, we actually didn't get a trade happening on this um, when we were first uh, uh, watching the price action because this started to pull up a little bit in the morning. So I'll show you guys the intraday action on this. Let's see. I'm trying to remember what the best time frame is to show you guys that. I'll show you guys it on a one minute time frame. Um, basically, 
initially it started to pull up and close the gap and that's because this had a measured move on a larger time frame where when it opened it was coming into a support level so it did a two-way correction shifted the momentum and then did that 2t heading into like 955 or so when it ended up triggering so we didn't follow this one as it triggered and followed through in the room we were just looking at it ahead of the open as something that okay this is one that you want to keep an eye on for these gap trades but one of the classes and the videos that I did last week talked about how to trade these earnings trades and it discussed the type of patterns to watch for for these earning plays so even though this ended up pulling up a little bit more than you'll typically see, this is pretty common action with these gaps. And then the afternoon, it continued just as you will typically find where it goes, gives you the continuation with the avalanche. And this is where we started following it again and kept the weakness. So, you know, uh, since I'm doing things live, I can't always follow every single thing as it's unfolding, but I give you guys uh, a lot of direction where you can keep a list of things that you can uh, keep an eye on throughout the day and even into the day and weeks ahead. So last Thursday, for example, we also went through a lot of swing trades that we're developing to help establish and develop a swing trading um, list for those of you that are swing traders. So we talk about a lot of different markets, but the main focus and the main reason for this new format is to give you guys education with the added benefit that you get to see some live action, some live scanning, and understand what it is I'm looking for as the market's unfolding, but it's really education-based. So it's something where every single session is recorded. You can go back and you can review those recordings within 24 hours. We try to get them posted within 24 hours onto the site, and you can study them at that point. So go to tonyhanson.com backslash join, totally free for right now, you guys. You have literally nothing to lose. Uh, you can cancel any time. If you don't cancel it, it will be automatically renewed in a month, but you have several weeks to check it out and decide, you know, is this worth $79 a month? Uh, I can tell you from the rest of you guys posting in here, it definitely is. So go take a look at that, and I hope that I will see you guys in the room on Thursday. Uh, Dean, what is my email address? It is info at tradingfrommainstreet.com. I'll post that here. And send that to all of you, and I'll also post it in the chat box so you can see that there as well. So both places, you can see it. And I'm going to go ahead and wrap up tonight's session. So I look forward to you guys joining me here um, over the next couple of weeks and look forward to your participation and your feedback too as well. So for those of you that have additional questions, stick around and I will be going to answer those now.